podcast. Rules apply to Andrew Latimer from Bloom Shapiro and Eric Hogarth from Johnson Brunetti, who are in to talk about our taxes. Good morning, fellas. How are you? Good. How Good morning, are you? It's a wonderful time of year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, all right. So I have a couple of friends who are CPAs who I know are working their fingers to the bone. So how did you manage to get out? Yeah, why aren't you in the office? Why aren't you in the office working? I've, I've already been in the office. This is like lunchtime for me. All right. You're like us. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you should have come for Yeah, food truck. You should have joined Ray at the food truck. Yeah. So um, how, with the changes in the tax laws this year, everybody understands that it seems like you're not getting anywhere near as much back as you've gotten in the past. How are people adapting to that? How are people adjusting to that news? Well, I think some of it is just managing their expectations. I've been talking to them about... You know, a lot of them, their tax liabilities are actually lower or right. equal. It's just that the withholdings came out at less. So they had more money in their pocket. So now when they're going to file their returns. Where's my refund? Right. They're figuring out, hey, my refund isn't as big or maybe I owe some money. And, and I just have to, you know, kind of manage their expectations by letting them know, hey, listen, that money was already in your pocket. And that's why you might owe or maybe you're not getting as big a refund. And but but most people I've looked at have uh, had less of a tax liability. Wow. Well, I know we got saved. I mean, they dropped the alternate minimum, which was very nice. Even though we live in a high tax state, and there's a cap on how much we can deduct. Right. That helped a lot of people this year. Yeah, well, it helped us. I tell you, you know, it's not ten thousand dollars that I owe. Anyway, uh, but you you know, and, and the other point that's made, uh, Eric, is with Jens Bernetti. The, the other point that's made. A lot of people use it as a savings account. And that's just not a wise thing to do because you're getting nothing for they have the money for a year. Yeah, people like that. I mean, w- well, when, I do when you look sense. at – I'm advocating against it, but people get in the habit of, oh, I get this big refund. And worst case scenario is people use that big refund to pay off the debt they've created throughout <laughs> the year. And the reality, as we know, is you're giving up use of that money for a year, which is not efficient. And so you get nothing for it. No, and we, we sit with a lot of retirees. So something, as Andrew was saying, that people have to be mindful of is just because you're not withholding tax doesn't mean you're not going to ultimately owe the tax. So you got to look at where you're drawing money from and make sure that your withholding is right because you don't want a massive refund, but you certainly don't want to owe a ton of taxes either at do tax time. You, do you think that people will now be aware of what's going on and in the future will take steps to make sure that their money is that they're not coming to the end of the year and being shocked that they owe this much yeah. money, that they'll put more money away? Or I've actually talked with quite a few of our clients, and we've actually been adjusting their withholdings. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. So they've been adjusting their withholdings so that they kind of know where they're going to stand uh, next year. I mean, we did some of that at the end of the year where we looked at people's withholdings and said, this is where you might be, but we're, we're – People are definitely more cognizant now, and they're actually asking us to uh, help them adjust their withholding so that at the end of the year they're not owing money or getting the refund right. that they were expecting. I mean, you know, I mean, Eric, you can probably answer it or you can um, very quickly. What is the – Andrew, what, what is the with, – with the, with, if you're retired and you're getting Social Security, a certain amount of it is tax-free. Is that correct? Maybe. It depends on what your income is. The key thing to be mindful of with Social Security, it's a cliff tax. So if your income is X, you don't pay any taxes on your Social Security. You increase that income by a dollar, all of a sudden 50% of it became taxable. Next threshold, 85% of it's taxable. So you're not paying – Get out of here. You're not paying 85% taxes, but 85% you will. So so most people are going to pay taxes on almost all of it, but – you have to be mindful of how they calculate that tax because if you can do anything to minimize it, it's a big deal. You could probably help. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got to look at that stuff and it's, you know, tax time makes people very cognizant of it, but it's really the things you're doing throughout the year that are going to help you around this time next year. All right, we need to take a short break, come up with traffic. All right, I'm Ray Dunaway along with uh, Jody Ambrosio. And two distinguished guests, yeah. Eric Hogarth, partner with Johnson Brunetti, Andrew Latimer from Bloom Shapiro. We're in talking taxes and what to do. Um, just to confirm, there's no extension because of Patriots Day or any of that. This year, it's April 15th. Right. Not in Connecticut. In right. Massachusetts, it, 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 there is an extension. Yeah. Well, they're a little bit softer than us, so they need more time. <laughs> um, when people come in, what's the, what's the biggest question, Andrew, that you get from, from people that they're confused about with the new tax laws? Well, I think one of the, the biggest things that I've seen this year is people have put a lot of work into trying to itemize their deductions, but with the new tax law and the limitation on how many, how much real estate taxes and and state income taxes you can take, most people are are 
getting the standard deduction. And so they're a little, you know, miff because they're putting all this work into their, you know, their charities and their medical expenses. Right, and right. and then at the end, I'm saying you didn't really get a benefit for them. And and again, I think it it's they're still in a better place. It's just yeah, that yeah. they went through a lot of work, especially in this first year. Mm-hmm. And so now there's some opportunities where I said, okay, well, maybe you want to do like a donor advised fund so that you pay your charities through a donor advised fund and you can still pay it every other year, but you can lump your charities so that you can actually get uh, itemized deductions every other year. Okay. Uh, if, if they have, especially with some of the retirees that I deal with right. that they don't have a mortgage interest. So without right. mortgage interest, it's very hard to get over the uh, the standard deduction. Let me jump to you, Eric, just very quickly. Speaking of retirees, I mean, there comes a time that you are required to pull money out of your 401k. Is that correct? Correct. Seven and a half. Yeah. I mean, something that we see. So the average retirement in the United States is somewhere between 62 and 65 years old is when people pull the plug. So yeah, to speak. they stop. Yeah. Right. And Figure particularly it. in high income tax states like Connecticut, which I love, of course, but <clears throat> people often find themselves in the early years of retirement deciding to just draw off of savings and pay effectively very little in tax. And that's a mistake. I mean, you want to be drawing most likely your pre-tax retirement funds in your early years of retirement as opposed to just having your most inefficient account get bigger and bigger and bigger because it's 70 and a half. The IRS is forcing you to take it out. And a lot of people, they don't spend the money. They just reinvest and you're paying more and more tax every year. And if you don't, what are the penalties? Half. 50% 50% penalty wow. if, if you don't take it out. Yeah, and you got to be careful because then someone passes away and you've got a beneficiary IRA. The rules are a little different. Oh. You know, y- you inherit a Roth IRA. There's no taxes, but you still have to take out that distribution. So you got to be very careful. All right. Any final thoughts, guys? We're going to have to roll no, I'm, no, go ahead. You, Do we have him like till nine or? No, we have him till eight thirty. Because they have here. to work. He can't stay away. He's got millions of they people waiting. They work for a living. Music. My lunch hour is almost over. <laughs> any, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> any and you fu- have to buck the traffic to get back. So, yes, yeah, that's a benefit. Go ahead, now, Joe. is this is does this tax plan change going next year? Is it is it kind of like a progressive type of thing? No, I, I, I most things are are in there now. That you know, there's been talk of a second wave of reform that right. they want to do, but that hasn't been passed yet. And so I think people are now able to see how it really works. And now they can make that next step of, you know, I tried to do something the first year, but now I kind of know how it's going to be. And right. so for the next three or four years, I can plan it out. And then in 2026, there are some things that will sunset. But again, okay. it's 2026. Who knows what happens to make it? Those may get extended. I as think we'll have well. tolls by then. Sure. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Andrew. What's your best piece of advice to your to, to the people listening about how to how to handle these uh, these new tax returns? Just make sure you do your planning and talk with a professional because there's a lot of things that professionals can help you right. um, minimize the taxes. And Eric, anything else new from you? I mean, just, you know. once, once you get through this tax season, be looking at that return to to be mindful of any inefficiencies that you might have. Things that you paid taxes on that you did not spend. Okay. Right, John D. Rockefeller was quoted, don't pay taxes on money you're not using. Good advice. <laughs> nice. Good advice. I like that. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming in. Eric Thank Hogarth, you. Andrew Latimer, Eric from Johnson Brunetti, and uh, Andrew from uh, Bloom Shapiro. And, of course, you can hear Johnson Brunetti on the radio. Yes, you can. On Sunday mornings, right? Is and also right? Saturday. Saturday and Sunday, right. Saturday, 8.30. Double header. Right. It's a twin bill. Two separate admissions, two separate paychecks. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Paychecks. <laughs>